Hello, my name is David Turner and this is the first in a new series of shorter podcasts um, tentatively titled Lunar Poetry Shorts that might change but we'll stick with it tonight these po- uh, podcasts are intended to complement the longer ones they won't replace them in any way they're just uh, the idea is to give you more of an insight into the poetry of certain poets um, and for the first episode we're joined by the wonderful Michelle Madsen who is the host of uh, Hammer and Tongue up in Camden and so usually in the podcast we start off with an introduction from the poet but instead of that we're going to begin with the poem this is called Not the Right Season for Nisa I hate to say she's managed to land in the wrong country that as the crow flies, she's about 30,000 Nisa hours away from anyone who believes she exists. So I just sit and watch her try to push unspeakable gifts on unsuspecting children in the playground. One well-fed looking kid with meaty fists for hands grabs her red hat and dumps it on his blonde head. Hey! I watch her mouth say. But her voice is very small and never mind it's hot even for July and the hat is a huge woolly hive that would make you sweat even in Lapland. I shake my head and concentrate on swinging higher, high enough to touch the sun with my feet. When I land on shaky legs and get over the dizziness, the sun, blindness, my little pal is gone. I see the blonde kid with the red hat in his hand and I use my superior height to wrest it from him. I sit on the park bench on a pile of newspapers and try to ignore the sticky layers that want to cling to me. I could have kept my eyes open and told her that some of us are grateful in the end, but I'm sure, or I hope, that she'll have guessed the same. So I sit back and let the heat watch over me. Let the red of my sweat cool my cheeks. Thank you very much. Thank and you. hello, Michelle. Hello, David. Um, just a quick point for listeners. If you hear any creaking, we're on a bloody houseboat, which is amazing. <laughs> um, it's not my knees creaking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was really good. Um, my first question is, uh, why poetry? Um, I actually took a long time to come to poetry. I'm not one of these people who was sort of scribbling down poems as a 10 year old I always read books I love stories I loved hide, you know, sitting on a windowsill yeah. and get, delving into these pages and literally leaping into another world my imagination was always firing but poems always left me a bit cold I even studied English at university and um, really struggled to kind of understand what was going on but I did. I, I did really love the the the, the rhythm and the, the the pace of thing, the poetry. And the one thing I really did like was old English poetry. I didn't understand what was going on. <laughs> had to learn an entire language in about three weeks. I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> but there are these um, constructs in old or Middle English poetry called kennings, two words that go together. They're like two word metaphors, okay. like windsweeper, which is a type of bird or something yeah. like that. And that sort of stuff stuck with me I couldn't really get Milton but I've got that sort of stuff but it was really when I went to a gig in um, in uh, uh, I think well, just after I finished university and it was a Four Nations Slam and it was a club called the Zodiac and um, and I saw the Queen of Sheba who's an American um, slam poet stand up and and perform and I was completely and utterly blown away poetry to me had been something kind of a bit dead and then to suddenly see it happen on a stage or this kind of magic summoning almost Mm. summoning of everyone's attention you're not dancing you can dance but it's a different thing it's kind of the words filled every crack in the room and I was like ah okay and then after that I started writing some of my own stuff and it sort of spun out from there so it was, uh, yeah, it was the inspiration found in a live performance more than through a book. Love of words through the written. Book. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. The reason I asked it is 
uh, so the next question was going to be um, is how often do you read your poetry in public and how important is that side of your uh, poetry practice to you? Um, I, um, it's, I probably I gig probably on average twice a week um, it really depends on the time of the year if I've got some big projects on then I'll try not to do so much but uh, generally around that many types if, um, always up for doing more gigs however so <laughs> do get in touch um, but the, that is, it's really it's it's a really important side to me I mean I love I love the theatricality of it I like I, I think that poetry does um, amazing things when it's something that is lifted from the page because that's one thing there but when you suddenly it's an oral tradition it's it's a it's about like uh sharing the sounds and your expression and and loving it and enjoying it and and i i love the wide gamut of the different things that people do when they perform i like the different style of their uh, <laughs> their interpretation of their own words um for actually when i i when I was doing the gig in Putney and I saw you for the first time I think it was one of the least word filled performances yeah. I've ever seen I was absolutely transfixed and I was like do you know what I mean if you had looked at that on the page there would be quite a lot of gaps and whilst you could a lot of gaps. <laughs> exactly but whilst you could you could get a lot from that maybe it's just so amazing to see it on stage and I, that's one of the ways that i'd like to that's one of the things i want to move into is um writing using my experience of writing poetry and and for the state for a stage yes, to yeah. turn that into something more kind of halfway between poetry and half and, and a play because yeah. it's a it's not a leap, too much of a leap from that, I don't think. No, actually, we can come on to that um, in a couple of questions time, but maybe we should uh, have another poem. Another poem? Yeah. Okay. This is called How Real Models Lose Weight. I'd like to go in at the waist instead of out. I've seen how good other girls look with fake gems glimmering in their flat bellies. I watch them in magazines, they glitter on the page. Their thin, brittle limbs are shiny trim, clutched possessively by interchangeable Adonises. Torsos carved out of pixelated marble, seen through grainy telephoto lens. I would like to be one of them. But unlike them, you see, I'm not fragile. I wouldn't break if you dropped me. I'd bounce. The oodles of bulk under my skin might bruise, but I would stay intact, protected by the layers which pad and fill the whole of my fat inside and out. My problem is, I see food everywhere. It litters the fridge, and on the street outside my door, it's advertised in glowing letters, night beacons and day sirens alert it to me. I want to be able to see through it, shed all of its constituent bits and be wraith-like a string of cells built on air and a hopeful scaffold of bones. You see, I'm enthralled to the flaking layers, the pulps, mulched tendons and muscles stripped of skin. I dissolve into spots in the unguents and emulsions. The foams mount, we urge it all out in bitter founts again and again and again. But I remain wide and heavy as an army of lead cadavers heaped in a lime pit. So I weigh up the issue and decide to sew my lips together. With a knitting needle I find in the drawer where the freezer bags are kept, I stab at them all, they wheeze, release. I use a sanitised butcher's string. It stings when it goes in and out as I my lips draw together in a bloody permaciss. It takes a while, but the pounds start to go and I glow with quiet pride from the creaking desert of my empty insides. I've eaten all my words. They sustain me jostling for space in my shrinking belly. It's been a long time since I had a conversation. But I don't doubt that reduced and silent, I am a better table companion than before. I watch you eat. I smile. You don't see it. 
The caked blood turns black. My lips fuse into a rosebud of promise which cracks when you touch it. I will use it to address the letter to the glimmering magazine editor when I am as flat as a page. And I'll have shelved that hefty third dimension and those pesky other selves, and I will package myself in a box, snugly held in place by handfuls of scented sawdust, perfumed with sachets of free cologne samples. Poster rolled, I'll be their centerfold, darling, unfurled, no curves, just a smile pulled taut around my golden skinned mates and a steely diadem in the middle of my fleshless model self. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> I was desperately trying not to cough then. <laughs> <coughs> cough away, yeah. cough away. Um, yeah, I'd like to ask how you critique your own work. Um, do you have any particular people you share your writing with or do you look for feedback from audiences? Or? Um, I definitely do look for feedback from audiences but there are some poems for instance like the one that you just heard which is really not something I perform mm -hmm. very often um, but actually I, that, that, I told you that was something I wrote quite a long time ago but I, that was worked yes. and worked yeah. and worked and worked and um, and actually, so the way I usually work is I'll, I'll, I'll write something, I'll get, and if, if I like it, I get excited about it. I'm like, I have to tell people about it, so I'll get up on stage and I'll shout it. And I usually <laughs> respond quite quickly to how, uh, you know, the, the response of the audience. So if they're like, yay, I'm like, yeah, this is a, this is a set yeah. piece. Um, and if it's not, then I usually, if, it, if there's a kind of stunned silence or like, people just look a bit horrified then I usually go back and I look at it and think do I like it do I wh wh why did I write this who have I written it for Is, am I doing anything interesting with language um, am I am, am I right have I got a message does this need to be told mm. to an audience of people on a, in front of a stage or can I just get on with it and write it for me and that's usually the process that I go through um, and uh, and I do share it with friends as well I've got um, I've got some there's some poets who I work quite closely with um, for instance with hammer and tongue and stuff that I, that I will share things with but I usually share it with the audience yeah and we sort of touched on this, or you did uh, a little bit earlier, so you might have already ha answered this question, but you might also want to go a bit more into it. I wondered how you would like to see your own writing progress. And I had actually put in brackets maybe some sort of Edinburgh style show. <laughs> so you mentioned about writing yeah. longer, so it's more, more like a play. But Well, I suppose, um, so there are a few things I'd like to do. Um, I am... Um, um, I'm, I'm writing a novel, which is something I'm finding very difficult because <laughs> I am um, I've been much more. I mean, I'm a journalist as well, so I am a prose writer, but I write short pieces that get published that yes. day, and that's a very different discipline. Mm. Um, with uh, with poetry, I just like it to get better and be more honest yeah. and um, and write more. But with the um, with a the theatre piece, I've been watching a lot of. Um, theatre which has been devised recently but devised with a bunch of people yeah. there's a great co company called 1927 which is actually based here in Hackney Wick which put on a fantastic show called Golem and quite a lot of that was in verse okay. um, and there's a theatre maker called Caroline Horton who's doing some very clowny things I like the I like the I like to bring together the very the, the form of poetry with something that's with um audio visual stuff and also this kind of like very exaggerated physical theatre because okay. i think that they're kind of all uh like polar opposites yeah. <laughs> i'd be interested to see what happens yeah uh and maybe a third and final part and then we go on to the last couple of questions okay um this is called would all melt. The night you said beautiful, 
I laughed my ribs out in great bowers of bent rope bone which broke from me, choking my protests in calcified smiles beaching eventually on the ashen fireside tiles, and I thought that night, I thought, this is all a tremendous joke. That night, we built a table out of those marble arcs and lined it with a lace of ancient brides and the pink silk of pig's ears which pricked up to hear you laugh that thick rich mirth which stopped all our wounds in a liniment of tumbling decibels that night your generosity could have tempted retiring icebergs into the sweltering gulf eased them into the shallows where mottled starfish would petrify in the aching meltwater that night your generosity could have begged a pause from a heaving coal train's snort and mass better than an entire horizon of red flags held up by 29 boiler-suited protesters. That night, you wore your generosity stitched around your neck in a cravat of courtesy. I searched in the arrows of the print for a caveat of infidelity made out and pointing to me, but you, you see, you, you soothe the edges of her sadness, her night fears bulk at you with a tight sprung release of so many spring lambs, those boundless leaping mutes bleating soundlessly into the dawn, and I, and I, and I stand alone, and leave you with a gift of seven lemons, strung up to dry in the August heat they have lost their bitterness, tanned by the sun, they are almost sweet. You palm the fruit carefully as if its blanched skin would bleach the humanity from your fingertips. But the fruit is innocent, and I will wait for years for the ears of your eyes to open and the eyes of your ears to awake. And until then, I am forbidden. I will sit between you like an unblooded banquo, freezing the air. I will make time still. Thank you very much. What's that line? Uh, laughed my ribs out in great bowers of bent. I rope really like bone. that. Yeah, I think that's the first poem I saw you do at Bang. Yeah, but, I, yeah I, that's. I really like that. I, that yeah, that one is always. You yeah, know, when yeah. you have quite something and it still sticks with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, just um, so I don't forget. Uh, so the poems that Michelle's been reading uh, today are from a book called Alternative Beach Sports, and that's through Burning Eye, and um, we'll try and whenever this goes out I'll try and put a link to that as well okay. um, so the fun, final couple of questions what uh, what have been the main influences over your development as a writer and a performer um, in terms of other writers uh, I've been very influenced by um, a number of writers who are connected to a publishing house called Right Bloody mm -hmm. in the United States. Um, right Bloody was set up by a poet called Derek Brown, who came on the Hammer and Tongue tour okay. a few years ago, um, and that was my introduction to this rock and roll, glittery, bloody bunch of amazing <laughs> kind of like you know crazy American poets and they're really they're, you know some have become quite good friends and it's they're it's a very different. Um, uh, package yeah. almost that you get um, but uh, you know in fact right in front of us here I've got a book of one of them and it's a poet called Mindy Netifi and it's a great book called Glitter in the Blood and it's about writing with okay. honesty and, and, and vim um, and that's great I mean and, and then I suppose like it's a bit of a corny thing to say but uh the greatest poet, one of the greatest poets, the two greatest poets I have was uh, introduced to us at an early stage would were Shakespeare and John Donne, and um, and John Donne just sat with me uh, for many many years. This this kind of very English, very clever word play and turning words in and on themselves, and it's something that uh, Shakespeare does as well to great effect. And you kind of go, is this a play or is this poetry? You kind of being played with all the time, and. I think I, for me, language is a game. If it's if you've got a conceit which is overplayed, not honest, then it's a bit of a crap game. Yeah. But if it's done well, you have you can create incredible words, or worlds rather, which um, can have so many different meanings. It's like looking into a tunnel of yeah. mirrors, and it's really powerful. So, yeah, those are the two biggest influences, I think. Okay. 
Um, whenever anyone mentions John Donne, I the fight the urge to. Um, it's a really terrible joke. Do you say it's pronounced John Did? Not John, John Donne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he, ha- he has actually a really good joke that he wrote about himself. Yeah. Um, because he married. Uh, I think he married, like, the daughter of his. Um, it's a family friend or something like that who's called Anne um, and I think she was I don't know there's a religious problem or something like that or she was like 10 and he was 70 <laughs> whatever was going on it was bad so his little epitaph for their relationship was John Donne Anne Donne undone <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was great yeah poetry bants <laughs> <laughs> 16th century we haven't got enough time to go into this now but I've, it's um, it, it's continued to surprise me and the more podcasts I do whenever people mention uh, poets that have influenced them from before the 20th century they're sort of apologising for it which is crazy but we haven't got enough time to go into that anyway <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so final question uh, is there anything that you'd recommend to our listeners to go out and see or read or watch or it could be anything it doesn't have to be poetry uh, yeah definitely um, so um, if you want to go and see some very interesting uh, well, have a very fun night go to Bang Say the Gun come to Hammer and Tongue um, London is awash with poetry nights there's about seven for every day of the week you don't need to stay at home write out loud has got a really good compendium and everything that's yes, going on right out loud. Um, it's great um, I'm involved in the book club boutique which is a, a fantastic unique and completely crazy night which is run by um, one of the most uh, this is she's a definitely an influence on me the fantastic Selena Gordon she's um, she's like the uh, Mae West of the London Literary Salon and she's quite special and one of the great things that happens at Book Club Boutique is that it attracts a very sort of Soho feeling crowd of writers artists uh, general bohemians um people around about town you kind of it, it's it's very special and there's also room for people to write their own work it's usually themed so you can write to a theme mm. and that actually really helped me when i started writing i used to go to those nights on a weekly basis and write to a theme and it was a really eye-opening uh, thing so on the march the 7th um the book club boutique is going back to selena Gordon's hometown uh, to a new venue on the road that she grew up called Springfield Road, which is the name of her memoir, and everyone's invited. Okay. That was the last question, so thank you very much, Michelle. Um, it would just, uh, by wrapping up, what we should do is, uh, I probably should have done this earlier, but um, do you have any blogs or websites you'd like to mention, Twitter accounts? Or yeah. Um, my, you can reach me on Twitter uh, at mish madsen um my website is michelle madsen poet um you can skype me at michelle madsen poet don't know if you want to do that (laughs) um but uh i post loads of stuff about what we're doing um on the general twitter sphere um and uh please do say hello um i'm happy to not just have a chat with you about my stuff but also to hook you up to other people Um, it's all good yeah so i'm gonna um invisibly point down with my pen when I say all of those links will be in the description below the video but just so you know because people don't always click on there automatically so if you we will list those underneath um, that was it that is it thank you very much Michelle it's been great and we're on a like I said we're on a, a on a boat this is the first uh, water bound <laughs> podcast I've done it's been really good um, that was Lunar Poetry Shorts um, go away